Good morning and welcome to a kind of, or yet another kind of Planet Doug experimental video. It's 6.30 in the morning here in Georgetown, Penang, Malaysia. And I'm speaking a little bit quietly because I'm in an Airbnb with kind of thin doors. So I don't want to speak too loudly and uh, disturb people around me. I have my usual uh, cup of coffee going, instant coffee. And I'm just turning on my laptop and signing in because yesterday I posted two videos. One was a tutorial video about using the uh, chapters feature on YouTube. Um, I like to add chapters. I think it's an amazing feature, but I was wondering if people out there didn't know what it was or how to use it. So I threw that together just in case. And then I posted a video I shot in Bangkok, the uh, five snack challenge at the Chatu Chak market. So both those videos, well, the Chatter Chat Market video was posted at 5 o'clock yesterday. So I guess it's been um, 12, uh, 13 hours since then. And I thought I would check online and look up whatever comments people may have left. And I'd reply to the comments uh, online you know, on video. Um, <laughs> this is turning into a bit more of a project than I'd anticipated because... Um, yeah, I tried to set my camera up so that I could control it remotely, you know, with the app. Because my camera is like far away from me on a tripod and it would be very convenient to be able to do things here. But, you know, those camera Wi-Fi apps, they are such a struggle. They just don't work as a rule. That, that technology has not been perfected. At least it has not been perfected for any of the cameras I've tried to use, including this one. So <laughs> I'd never used it with this camera before and I spent about an hour already this morning just trying to set up Wi-Fi. And um, I fought with it and fought with it and fought with it. And it just kept disconnecting, disconnecting. And I didn't really understand any of the instructions. I find them very complex every time I try to do this. But uh, anyway, it, uh, it did not work and now uh, the camera is far away from me and uh, I have it sitting on a tripod on my bed. So I have to, I'm trying to make sure, you know, I don't move around too much. I'm not sure whether um, I, can, I will accidentally knock it over or something, but yeah, it actually seems pretty uh, stable. Another complication for me is that this laptop, for whatever reason, won't connect to Wi-Fi. I mean, it will connect sometimes, but then the signal is so, so weak. It's so slow. I can't really operate the laptop connecting to like, uh, you know, hotel Wi-Fi or, or uh, Airbnb Wi-Fi. So what I have, and yet my phones will connect with a very strong signal and that's no problem at all. So what I end up having to do is turn on uh, Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone because it's connected to the Wi-Fi and it has a good connection and then I connect my laptop through my phone hotspot to the Wi-Fi. I, I can't connect directly and I don't understand why that would be but um, that's what I'm doing right now connecting to my phone on my laptop there okay now I have um, Wi-Fi connection, a good solid connection on my laptop and, and I can operate this beast. <laughs> Perhaps a couple of uh, channel notes before I dive into the comments. One is, well, this, this video was shot actually about two weeks ago in Bangkok. Um, I've, I have had very poor access to Wi-Fi and I've been very busy, so I've kind of been falling behind in terms of uh, posting videos. <laughs> so the Chatter Jack Market experience that you see in the video was actually yeah, two weeks ago in Bangkok. And uh, I find that an interesting aspect to making YouTube videos. You end up being a little bit lost in time. 
um, even this morning as I was showering I was thinking about this and it reminded me of like a book that made a big impression on me I think it makes a big impression on everyone who reads it at a young age in their life you know Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five because the main character in Slaughterhouse Five has become unstuck in time and he's just living his life and at any moment he will just switch to a different time period in his life like without warning and he's just walking along and then boom he's like 20 years ago and then he jumps to another time period and he never knows what what time period he's going to end up in and what he's doing at that time in his life and he's living simultaneously in all these different time periods because he just shows up in all of them randomly and as a youtuber you end up doing that because I woke up here in Penang. This is my real life and I'm thinking about what I'm going to do today. But I also posted a video of an experience from two weeks ago. So my mind is occupied with that time, replying to comments that people left about that experience. So I'm also living in that time period. And when you're filming, like when I go out with my cameras today, I'm living my life in real time I'm, I'm present and experiencing things and doing things but part of my brain is also in the camera separate from me watching me do these things right so I'm doing them but I'm also watching myself doing them through the camera and another part of my brain is already thinking about what I'm going to do with that video like how I'm going to turn that you know what I'm filming right now it's eventually going to be turned into a video that goes on to YouTube and I'm already thinking ahead to how that's going to work out because I'm composing the shot as oh am I aiming the camera at the right spot for this moment for the video in the future so I'm living in the present in the past and in the future simultaneously and um, <laughs> you, you start to get a little bit absent-minded after a while you sort of lose track of time and uh, be, you become unstuck in time it's kind of a funny thing another channel note is that for the last I don't know 10 videos I can't I, I don't know the exact number I went back to putting in vocabulary notes and I've done that in the past where I started inserting a list of vocabulary English vocabulary you know interesting words and phrases that I just happen to use in the video and this is coming out of my history as an English teacher I can't help myself and people have often commented on my videos that they enjoy them because of how clearly I speak and it helps them um, improve their English listening comprehension skills things like that and I think about those people and then I try to add value to my video for them by adding vocabulary notes and every time I do that my idea is that it's going to be very easy to do like oh it'll just take me a few minutes and I'll just throw together this list throw it on the video and that that will be a nice added bonus for some people that might watch my videos but it always ends up taking far more time than I anticipated and I find that's very true right now so to be honest I don't think I'll be able to do it in the future because it, it just takes hours like you think you can just toss that vocabulary list together throw in a couple of screens you know type out the word and and yet by the time you're done it probably adds three hours to making the video that might seem crazy but it's amazing how much time gets sucked up in the video process I sit down and I think oh I'll just do that little vocabulary thing you know and it's five o'clock at night and I, I think I'll just whip it together and then I look and oh what? you know it's nine o'clock at night and I'm still not done with the vocabulary and recently I started shooting with a occasionally with a 360 camera and the 360 camera involves a two-step editing process where you have to reframe the video first before you even get a video that you can work with to do your normal editing and that kind of doubles the amount of editing you need to do the amount of time required 
and there's been a bit of a conflict lately. I just don't have enough time to do everything. Something has to go. And um, as much as I really enjoy doing the, that vocabulary list, I think I'm going to step aside for a while and not do that for the next few videos that I edit. Anyone that enjoys that feature, you know, I apologize that I have to sort of uh, set it aside, but the time constraints are uh, kind of, yeah, getting a little bit overwhelming. So I'm going to let that go for a little bit. I mean, if there's a, a huge uproar out there and I find out that everyone loves that and, and everyone wants it back, you know, but I have a feeling, of course, that it's just a, a small group of people that might get some value out of that feature. And uh, you know, I have to balance uh, my time and efficiency, you know. So I think that is uh, something I have to stop doing for a little while, um, just to come to grips with the amount of video editing I have to do. So let's take a look at some uh, comments. There's uh, only three comments on the uh, YouTube chapters video, and I think I saw them already, actually. Uh, C, longtime viewer and uh, a wonderful commenter, she said, uh, Thank you, Doug. Very interesting and informative. Great information. And, yeah, I, I know this name as well. Kugel Schreiber Susa Munbauer. He wrote, interesting, I didn't know that. And Louise Luzuka from Vancouver said, uh, wrote, yes, please. So um, one person here didn't know about that feature. So my, my, uh, my uh, video tutorial helped one person out there who didn't know about it. So <laughs> I'm glad. I actually enjoy making those videos quite a bit because I am quite interested in technology in general. And to shoot a video like that, or to make a video like that, you use a screen capture app. So you basically turn on a screen recorder on your phone, and everything you do on your phone is recorded as a video. And to do that, I also connect my mouse to my phone via Bluetooth, and then I connect an external microphone on a tripod you know so i create a little studio and then i basically um yeah just do things on the phone like a little tutorial and that whole thing is being recorded as a video and yeah kind of i like doing that you know like opening up google maps i did that before and then i'm exploring google maps but i'm recording everything i'm doing on my phone and that ends up in a video and uh, yeah i kind of enjoy doing stuff like that so let's move on to the five snack challenge. As I said, it's been yeah, about um, 13 hours since it was posted. And to be honest, replying to comments would probably be better after like two days so that everyone is, who's going to watch that video has had a chance to do so. And if they, they, anyone who will leave a comment has done so, there will probably be more comments coming in over the next 24 hours, but maybe I can do this as a uh, two-parter. So the, the video has been viewed 938 times, which is not exactly taking, uh, <laughs> taking YouTube by storm. But, and there are uh, 16 comments. Um, Azhar Idris writes, Note to the boat operators, instead of flying different color flags to identify the operator or company that runs the service, why not just paint the boat in a color the operator wants to be identified with? Or am I missing something? Doug, looking forward to your Malaysian upload. You will find KL has changed a lot since you were there. And then there's already a reply to his comment from Mode K, a very thoughtful man, as I've learned over the last couple of years. And he wrote, flags are more easy to change. The boat might be used for different routes throughout the day or week. Yeah, and that's probably what I would have replied, I think. It's a, it's a great idea. It'd be fun if you could paint every boat a different color and then you know, it'd be easier to, to identify and um, it would make the, the river quite colorful, you know, the orange boats and blue boats and green boats. Though also, some of the boats had mul no, yeah, some of the boats had multiple flags. They seemed to be doing multiple routes. So then how would you paint that boat? You know, half orange and half blue, you know. But as Mode K points out, 
using the flag system, you can just use the same boat for any road. You just grab the orange flag and today as the boat operator you during the doing the orange route but tomorrow morning that boat is doing the blue one or the green one and they just change the flag and it seems like a, a workable uh, system that way. But yeah, painting the boats would be fun. International uh, Big Shot, a uh, subscriber I see, he writes, oh he quotes me Apparently, I like saying chat to chat. Who wouldn't? End quote. What a great line. I'm really enjoying these videos of you on the move, and I think the versatility of the 360 camera has a lot to do with what you're able to record now. It's like having multiple cameras without all the work. Absolutely. Um, uh, chat to chat. Uh, I don't know whether I'm saying it properly to be honest but I think I heard it pronounced chatuchak so in the, in the video I, I noticed I was saying chatuchak over and over again because I normally struggle so much with pronunciation of you know Thai language or any any foreign language I really have a hard time so I'm kind of afraid of foreign words now especially place names so when I find one that kind of rolls off the tongue for me a little bit, I like to say it over and over again. I guess I'm so proud of myself that uh, I can actually say this word, a rare occurrence. Um, but then he, he, he referenced what I was talking about, you know, the 360 camera and how that has affected the videos I've been shooting. And he's not wrong. The um, 360 camera has changed almost everything that I'm doing. Um, as he said, it, it, it is like having multiple cameras because, you know, you hold it here and it's filming this entire room. So as the editor, I could include video of me, then I can switch to video of the camera filming me over there. I could film the desk over there, the door, the roof, the ceiling. If there was a knock on my door, you know, someone telling me to, you know, keep your voice down or something. And then the door opened, I could film the person speaking to me and I could cut back and forth in the conversation between that person and me. You know, it's just infinite variety in terms of where the camera can be pointing. And because of that, it affects me physically in that I don't have to move the camera with a normal camera, of course. Given that same scenario, I would be constantly pointing the camera in different directions. I have to point it that way, then point it at me, then point it at the desk. And then if someone knocks on the door, I have to point the camera at them, which is very awkward, and then back at me, then back at them, you know. You're constantly moving the camera around and thinking about where to aim the camera in the moment. And that's the key thing about it. So it kind of throws you out of the moment where as I was talking about as a YouTuber you're living in different places at the same time and even in different time periods because you're filming yourself and the more aware you are of the camera and what the camera is doing the more of you is over there and not immersed in reality you know where you are at the time but with the 360 camera, it's essentially like I'm just carrying a stick. I don't, I'm, I don't think about the camera much. Um, you still think about it a little bit. There are things you do have to think about, but it's a very small amount. So it's really like walking around all day and I'm just holding a long stick and I'm holding the camera in front of me and I, don't, and I'm, I forget that the camera is there and I can concentrate on what I'm doing and uh, yesterday I had a very good experience. I went to a market. I had a meal in a very crowded market area at a, like a food stall. And I haven't seen the video yet, but I just, you know, I have a little grip, you know, and I was holding it and I just attached the grip to something. And I just had my bowl of noodles and that camera was filming the entire world around me. Me eating the noodles, the women preparing noodles, the man who engaged me in conversation over here, all the people walking past. And it's almost exhausting to think about all the editing you can do with all that footage. It's like, how do you even decide what part to keep? You know, it's actually, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a brain drain while you're editing. It's a strain on your brain in editing. But 
it makes the filming much easier. And then after that, I went into a little fish market and a very friendly man there just stopped me and said, oh, hello, who are you, you know, where are you from? And um, he was busy chopping up fish and he just, you know, engaged me in conversation and he, he got me a cup of coffee and I talked to him probably 30, 40 minutes, something like that. And the whole time we were talking, I was just holding this stick and it captured our entire conversation. Again, I haven't seen that video yet, but I'm hoping it's good. I'm hoping it's interesting. And if I were using a GoPro or, or a mirrorless camera, it would have been far more deliberate and difficult to record that. I mean, if I had my own cameraman, sure, that person would just be standing over there and, and, and you know, doing their cameraman thing, but I'm holding this heavy, you know, camera at the end of a stick. And then what do I do? Do I carefully try and move it around to sort of get the two of us in the frame? And then I'm looking at the camera to see, okay, have I lined it up properly? And, you know, 50% of my brain is thinking about operating the camera and I'm not engaged in the conversation anymore. And it probably would make him awkward because it's like, what is this foreigner doing? He's now he's aiming a camera at me. And, you know, it's, it's just weird. And all those conversations that I do have usually don't end up on video. But with the 360 camera, more and more of them are ending up on video. And I get to include that in uh, the videos that I shoot. So, yeah, long uh, answer. But, uh, yeah, I've been thinking about this 360 camera quite a bit. Gary Spears writes, It's great to see all the foreigners again touring the world. Yeah, agreed. Um, and for me, it's really interesting, too, because... I think people had started traveling more and more months ago, but I was still in Mesot in Thailand, and there were very few people there. I saw a few new foreigners from time to time. So once I left Mesot and went to Bangkok, and then now to Georgetown, not only are more people traveling, and there's more tourists everywhere, more backpackers, more adventurers, more of everybody, more YouTubers. Boy, are there a lot of YouTubers. I'm also going to places that have a much higher concentration of them. So for me, just to go to Bangkok, and I stayed in the Gao San Road area, you know, the kind of the, the backpacker uh, district of Bangkok, and it was just like, whoa, foreigners everywhere. When I went to Chatu Chak Market, I commented on that in the video. It's a, it's a tourism market, and there are so many foreigners there. When I, when I planned to go to the market, I didn't realize to what extent it was designed for tourists. Like it's kind of a tourist market, I think. And I, I didn't realize that when I went there, but I didn't mind it when I got there because it was just so much fun to see all the other foreigners. I mean, they're as interesting to me as you know, Malaysians would be. I mean, Malaysians are from another country and it's interesting to talk to them, but Germans are from another country too. Italians, you know, Spanish, whoever the tourist is, you know, so all these people are just as interesting to me as the, you know, the local Malaysian population. So yeah, it's great to see all these foreigners. Tim Bin Jim, drink looks like, oh boy, light, light. I, always, I never know how to pronounce this word either. I guess I'm not a fruit guy. Lychee. Lychee? Drink looks like lychee, perhaps. Could be. Again, I don't I know so little about fruit. It's embarrassing. Mark Lee W. Coaching writes, background noise is so tiring to hear after a while. That was something I noticed too. I use this microphone, the Rode Wireless Go. And I, I love this microphone as a rule, but when I was at the market, particularly in the restaurant where there's a lot of conversation, it was picking up a lot of background noise, like a lot throughout the whole video, I guess. And I noticed that myself. And I, I have this weird memory of when I first bought the microphone, I thought it isolated my voice more and 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 pull, pulled in back like ambient noise but not too much of it but lately it seems to be a lot of ambient noise from my surroundings so 
for certain situations, like if you know you're going into a busy cafe or a busy restaurant, then, you know, if you're a professional, you'd probably switch to a more appropriate microphone, like a shotgun mic aimed at me. But then, oh, that adds such a level of uh, complexity to your life. And then, of course, if someone comes up to you and talks to you, now the shotgun mic is completely blocking their voice because it's only getting yours. At least this one, in theory, is getting sound from all directions. But yeah, audio is a, a real beast when it comes to video. But yeah, I noticed the background noise myself as well. It bothered me. It was, it was, it was too much. Jamie Parker writes, I love your enjoyment of the simple gifts that we are given. It's a joy to watch and you bring a lot of pleasure to people. Thank you. Well, it's a very nice comment. Um, he says the simple gifts that we are given. I'm not quite sure what he's referring to there. He could be referring to my love of this camera um, because it, it was a gift of, from a subscriber who, who sent me this camera. And to be honest, looking into my little camera bag over here, a lot of the items in there were given to me by various people because they, <laughs> they, they see my struggles with technology and they think, oh, we better help out that poor guy, you know? And they get on Lazada and then send me something, you know, that, oh, this adapter will fix that problem for you. And, oh, you need to, you know, this for that. And then I have gotten some amazing gifts over the years, including this laptop, in fact was a gift from a subscriber and um, yeah this is a constant in my life um, yeah I don't know how I would live without it so all right oh okay Arpa Kai writes it is hmm, fruit again longan juice Longan is one of the famous fruits from north of Thailand and fresh longan is very awesome for me Okay, because in the, in the video, one of my snacks was a drink. It had some kind of a fruit floating around in it. I didn't know what the fruit was. And uh, I guess it's a longan fruit, if I'm saying that properly. Thank you, Ar Arpakai. I just had to stop recording there for a minute because I noticed something about my camera was off. And then I realized it had stopped recording. And I haven't talked about this at all yet. It could be another channel note, but I'm going to leave it perhaps for another day. But this, I'm filming with a new camera. <laughs> you wouldn't think, given my life, that I uh, you know, had room for another camera in my life. But um, this is a very, um, very amazing camera that I'm using right now. And uh, I've been doing a deep dive into learning how to use it. But my ongoing struggle with the camera world continues because they are generally not suitable for what I like to do. They're not, they're still, most cameras are designed to take pictures and then they add video capability. There still is no camera on the market that was designed from the ground up for video vlogging. There just isn't one. And I don't care how many times Sony comes out with a new camera that they announce as their ultimate vlogging tool. It isn't. It's awful. All cameras are awful for vlogging. They just don't have even the most basic features that you need. And <laughs> as amazing as this camera is that I'm using, I keep encountering little things. For example, um, it's not the best at autofocus in video mode, but it does have uh, it does have face tracking in for, for it has an autofocus face tracking setting. So I've turned that on, but in, in for some insane reason that I don't understand when you are not recording, like you're just holding the camera and setting it up, you get a nice little box around your face. You can see it on the LCD screen and it's tracking you. And it's amazing, you just kind of go like this and you go like this and ooh, ooh. everywhere you go, that box follows you. And I thought, wow, amazing. This camera has really good tracking, surprisingly good tracking. So it might be very useful. But as soon as you hit the record button for video, that box disappears. It's not there anymore. So I'm looking and it's like, oh, I don't know if it's tracking me or not anymore. Before I hit record, I could see the box, 
But as soon as I hit the record button and start recording video, the box disappears. And I assume it's still working, it's still tracking me, but I can't really tell. And I'm like, oh, for Pete's sake, you people who design these cameras, like, think, think for a minute, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> think about how people use your cameras. Um, but anyway, I noticed something was wrong because I, I, out of the corner of my eye, I could see the LCD screen and I noticed there was a box around my face tracking me. And I thought, oh, that's weird. Why is there a box now? Because there normally isn't. And I just realized, ah, because I can see the tracking box, that means that the camera stopped recording for some reason. I think I hit a memory limit because I've been talking for so long, like a limit for one file sort of thing. And it just shut down. Another issue with this camera, like a completely mind-boggling, insane one, is that when you're recording, um, you get a little red dot on the LCD screen. So you can see, you see the red dot, oh, camera is recording video. <laughs> but the way this camera was physically designed, when you plug in an external microphone, the plug of your microphone sits right on top of the red dot on the screen. So you can't see it. For whatever reason, they put the red dot on the top left-hand corner of the LCD screen right against the camera, like the worst possible corner to put it where you can't see it. And when you plug in a microphone, it covers it up. So right now, I can't see that I'm recording. I can't see the red dot. I have to lean way over here look around the mic and I can just, okay, the red dot is on. Okay, it's recording. You know, and I have to come back here. Like, why not put it in the other corner, like up here in the top right corner where everyone can see it easily. It's like, oh, it's sort of like, you know, in a city, they design an intersection and they put, a, you know, the traffic lights up there and they says, well, let's take a, a billboard and put it right in front of the traffic lights so that nobody can see it. You know, it's like, I mean, obviously you wouldn't do that. And yet, so why would you do this? It's such a, such a silly design, but uh, I could go on. The struggle with cameras is uh, very real. Um, okay. Per Spike, he wrote, this dude is a great, amiable dude. Love your calm, gentle-paced videos. <laughs> is that a t-shirt I could uh, get? You know, just like big letters, a great, amiable dude. Put it on the front and the back, and I can walk around with that. Thank you, Perspike. I, I think it is my nature. I'm fairly easygoing, I think, for the most part. I don't get too upset, but I definitely also cultivate that attitude probably comes from years of being overseas when I, I know that being in another country where you don't always understand what's going on leaves a lot of room for misunderstandings it's amazing how you misunderstand even the simplest things and then with the language barrier you experience a, a, a great feeling of loss of control over your own life and that can lead to a lot of stress and frustration and impatience and that combined with the real risk of misunderstanding which I've seen so many times can well it makes me take a step back like if I start to feel like you know some sort of frustration or anger I step back from it I'm aware of it and I don't act on my emotions I deliberately dial everything down um, because you just have to so and I end up being a little bit of an observer like rather than reacting emotionally to everything I'm more like I'm, I'm back inside my own head behind my own eyes watching me in that situation and I'm sort of observing everything going around as if it isn't really having an effect on me. You know, like classic examples as you go, you know, you go in, oh, actually, I have one right now. Um, here in uh, Georgetown, there's a place called Yummy Cottage, a food court just up the street. I love to go there for dinner, so I've had a lot of dinners there. And the deal is that you have to order a drink in order to sit at one of the tables. 
So every time I go there, you know, I get my food, I sit at the table, and eventually someone comes up to me and goes like, drink, drink. You know, what, what, what drink do you want? You have to buy one. And I've been struggling with my order, and I don't know why, because at another place, I had a milk tea like iced tea, but I, like a milk iced tea. And it was really, really good. And it was called milk iced tea. And then and and they understood all these people speak English, were communicating in English. And at this place, every day I've been there, I talk to the, the drink people, drinks people, and I say, you know, I like, you know, a milk iced tea. And they kind of confirm it. So like, okay, tea with ice. And they say, they always say sugar or no sugar, and I said, yes, sugar, I want sugar, and milk, like a milk iced tea. And the guy says, milk, yes, milk, milk iced tea with sugar. He's like, okay, and he goes away, and then he brings me back clear tea, no milk, right? It's like, <laughs> it's like okay, the first time it happened, I think, okay, okay, we, we, we miscommunicated somehow, and I, I, instead of sending it back and saying, well, that's not what I ordered, I wanted milk iced tea, and, you know, getting upset over a ridiculous thing about tea is, would be pretty silly. Anyway, I just drink the tea, and I enjoy it. Next day, I went back for dinner, and we went through the whole routine again, you know, and I thought, okay, this time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it across, you know, milk, like milk iced tea. And I'm looking at the menu trying, I didn't, I didn't prepare anything visual. Like I should have done the whole, you know, written it out on my phone, like milk, get a picture of a cow or something like milk iced tea. But anyway, I had the whole conversation with him and he kept repeating back to me, milk. And I, so I assumed he understood like, okay, milk iced tea, sugar, no sugar. Okay. The whole thing. And then he goes away and he comes back clear tea just normal tea without any milk right again and then last night i went back and i tried one more time you know milk iced tea it was the same guy and then he brought back clear just you know normal tea without any milk again so i i don't know like what is happening in this situation i just i will never know and my personality it drives me crazy when i don't know something i don't really care what happened i just want to know why it happened and not knowing why drives me uh drives me nuts so uh, <laughs> i just end up laughing about it and the tea he brings me is good so i don't have any problem with it it's not the tea i wanted but it's not like it was terrible tea so but i, I I'm, I'm next time i go in i'm gonna go in with all my tools prepared. I'll bring my own cow if I have to, and I'll milk it in front of him and say, okay, milk in the tea, you know, we're, we're going to communicate someday about this. We'll see. Keith D., a uh, longtime viewer and uh, commenter, he writes, when I was in Bangkok several months ago, I also went to Chattuchak Market and also, like yourself, couldn't buy anything because my backpack couldn't get one more item in it. So I walked around and spent about 20 minutes trying to find the exit, which was a challenge in itself. Also, when you hold the selfie stick, the stick itself is invisible to us and your hand looks like Senor Wences. First of all, I can, I can relate to the backpack thing. Um, that's one thing about my life too. I've spent a lot of my life overseas and uh, you know, as a foreigner, as a tourist, you know, you buy souvenirs, beautiful things from those countries that you can take back to your home, put on display and a, remi a reminder of the trip you went on. But I can never buy any souvenirs because I don't have a home where I can put any of these things. So it's, it's a bit of a shame that I, I don't have any mementos of any of these places. I can't take advantage of the artwork or the batiks or the, you know whatever you can buy in different countries. But um, even if I could, uh, like Keith, I have no more room in my backpack. So I, I couldn't fit it in anyway, so I can relate. Finding the exit, yeah. Yeah, Chattuchak, well, finding exits anywhere sometimes is a challenge. This is a big, sprawling market with lots of ways to go in and out. And if you're not keeping track of where, where you came in and where you went, I mean, it's a maze in there. And then finding your way back out again, you could maybe find an exit, 
but you're in a completely different part of the city and you have no idea where you are. But yeah, escaping from that market would be a challenge. Senior, senior Wences. I don't know who that is. I'll look it up afterwards. I could look it up now, but uh, I won't. So walking around like that, I look like Senior Wences. I have no idea who that could be. R. Ottaviano writes, Hi Doug, don't you feel embarrassed talking to the camera in front of all those people, lol. I love your videos by the way, and these new ones with the 360 camera are simply amazing. Yeah, uh, talking in public in front of people, no, I don't, I don't, personally I don't feel any embarrassment at all. Um, I think part of it for me is, is a bit of a logical thing because it's not like you can blend in anyway. Like I, th this was something from the past too. In the old days, I would take pictures. I didn't shoot video. I would do a lot of writing and I would take pictures. And then I noticed when you, re when you talk to other foreigners <clears throat> or even read articles online, they talk about you know, uh, taking photos where no one notices you, how you can, so they, they, they want, they feel embarrassed about holding the camera and taking pictures and they're like hiding behind a pillar and trying to get all these pictures and then no one sees them and no one notices them. But I mean, that's all kind of nonsense because I mean, look at me, you know, if I'm in Sumatra or the Philippines and I'm walking through a village, it's not like no one is going to notice me. Like everyone is looking at me all the time anyway, because I'm clearly from somewhere else, you know? Um, you know so the idea that I can blend in and, and you know, if I don't speak or I, I'm not holding a camera, like nobody's gonna look at me, you know, as if holding the camera will make me more visible, you know? So I realized that um, it doesn't matter. I mean, everyone's looking at me anyway, so I might as well just hold my camera in my hand and you know, it's there, like don't try to hide because you can't hide anyway. And maybe that realization has fed into just being comfortable walking around, being the center of attention. And then, you know, it's very goofy to be holding a camera and talking to yourself, no matter where you are in the world. It's a weird thing to do, but I'm fine with it. And then the realization that I'm talking in public and people are all around me can listen in to what I'm saying. That doesn't bother me because I'm putting it on YouTube. Everybody's going to be able to hear what I'm saying. So I don't care if the people at the tables around me can hear me, you know, um, it's a public thing I'm doing. So yeah, just a lot of reasons. I, mean, I guess it's just a personality thing. I'm not self-conscious when I was young. Um, I was engaged in like speech contests as a student. So I had a lot of practice standing in, up in front of a big audience and um, giving speeches and yeah, I'm comfortable in front of people, in front of crowds. It's just a personality thing, I guess. Luis Luzuka writes, checking in, how you been? Yeah, I'm good. Um, that's uh, uh, there's a lot going on, of course, um, in my life right now with leaving Thailand, coming to Malaysia, here in Penang, and then I'm going to Kuala Lumpur in one week. And uh, so I'm thinking a lot about that, what I'm going to do, you know, when I get there. And so, um, yeah, doing, doing really well. Um, I'm really enjoying my days here. It's a combination of a lot of things going on. I know some people here in Georgetown. I've been able to hang out with them a little bit. That's nice. I haven't had a very social life for a long time, so it's nice to have a little bit of a social thing going on. Being on the move gives you a lot of energy. You know, it kind of wakes you up. So just moving from Thailand to Malaysia, I feel a little bit more energized. Also a little bit overwhelmed because the editing, again, I talk about that a lot, of videos takes a lot of time. It's kind of funny, people will say, oh, editing video is such hard work. And it is, but it's not, that's a bit of a misnomer because it's not really hard work. That kind of implies that it's just like so difficult and hard to do, you know, you have to really apply yourself, but that's not the problem. The problem is that it just takes a long time. 
you know, think about maybe someone setting up, you know, those dominoes. You know, people put like 10,000 dominoes to make something beautiful and then they knock it over. Setting up each individual domino is not hard work, but it's going to take hours and hours and hours to do. And editing video is like that. It's not like I'm sitting here like sweating and like, oh, this is such hard work. I'm working so hard. It's just that you sit down at eight o'clock in the morning to get something done. And then before you know it, it's eight o'clock at night. And you've been sitting there the entire day working on this video. And you're like, where did the time go? So there is a little bit, I'm saying in my life, there's a little bit of a stress there, a bit of a um, problem in my mood with the pressure I feel that I'm here in Penang and I should be out there exploring and doing things, but I also have to deal with the video I'm shooting about those. So there's this constant struggle, conflict between time spent editing and time out there doing what, you're, what I want to be doing. Which isn't to say I don't want to be editing. I do enjoy it. I really love editing, but I love being out there as well. So he's asking how I am. That's kind of how I am. Good, but feeling a bit of um, pressure, conflict between those two things. And the most recent comment, no words, just uh, two thumbs up and two uh, roses. And uh, the name of the person appears to be in uh, Arabic. So... I don't know uh, where from. So those are the uh, the comments right now for the uh, Chat to Chat video. As I said, this is kind of an experimental video. You know, wake up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, shoot a video, and a video like this is kind of attractive because it doesn't require editing. You know, I can just sort of cut it up and it's put it in one chunk and upload it. So in theory, it's a lot. It's faster to uh, make a video like this, as opposed to a normal, you know, a vlog that covers a whole day's events. So I just thought I'd uh, play around with this a little bit and reply to some comments. So that is it. Speaking of time pressure, it is time to stop doing this and uh, start my day. Start doing something else here in uh, Georgetown. I'll see you in the next video.